Hi, Greg. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Very well. Very well. Very well. Thank you. And uh, thanks for being here. As you know, we're opening up enrollment into the association again soon, and we'd like to talk to PhDs, associates such as yourself who've transitioned successfully into industry. Uh, so again, thank you. And maybe you can just start by introducing yourself and the position and company you're with now. Of course. So I'm uh, Greg Lambert. I recently finished up my PhD in chemical engineering at Virginia Tech. I'm currently doing a postdoc right now at the University of Tennessee, which opened up the door to my current job at Tajin Carbon America. They are one of the big three carbon fiber suppliers in the entire world. And, and my job with them is the technical service rep, which is kind of like your field application scientist. With essentially, I'm uh, just giving fielding technical questions from customers and helping them understand you know, how they're how to better process our fibers and use them to meet their own customers' needs. Fantastic. Yeah, and it's a great company to be with. Uh, congratulations again on your success. Can you talk a little nice. bit about uh, what things were like before you transitioned, though? I know you had some challenges in your job search. What were those challenges, both the technical challenges, like your resume, LinkedIn, networking, but also the mindset challenges, not knowing where to start, dealing with rejection, etc.? Right. So uh, before I finished my PhD, I had done some a pretty long series of interviews with BASF at their headquarters in Ludwigshafen, Germany. Uh, I was a candidate for the position, made it all the way to the last interview, but they that fell through. So I was left at the end of my um, the end of my PhD, uh, having kind of put all my eggs in that basket and having no prospects, almost you know one or two months out from my leaving. Mm. So I quickly scrambled to put together something and a contact I had at the University of Tennessee, my current boss, um, reached out to me, uh, asked if I was about to finish graduating because he had an open postdoc position. Mm. I was a little hesitant at first because I was familiar with the, uh, the CSA strategy, but I, I, mean, I still, I saw it as an opportunity to build my skill set and to network with people who would be in the industry I actually wanted to move into, which was the composites industry. So so you started your job search, got to the interview process, fell through, didn't end up going anywhere, so you took a postdoc. As you went through this and then you joined the association, what were some of the things you started to learn about your job search, such as what you said, you know, learning to network, etc. Once you joined, what were some of the kind of immediate things that you learned, some of those early aha moments? Well, um, I say that uh, the biggest thing I learned was to actually have an actual strategy in place, not just randomly throw out resumes, but uh, talk to people who can actually help you understand how to sell yourself and don't be afraid of selling yourself. Mm. And overall, just taking a more intelligent PhD level approach to actually getting your job. Um, so the big thing that really helped me with the CSA was just actually visualizing that strategy and actually putting it into action. Hmm. So you got the strategy, you started walking through it, you know, got trained on, on how to put together the right job search plan for you. But there's always a second component of the association too, which is the private group, the community getting feedback. Can you talk a little bit about that and how it helped you? Sure. Um, it's always nice to hear different perspectives on things. Mm. Uh, I wasn't as active in submitting my resumes and asking for feeling other opinions, but it was still nice to scroll through the feed and learn about the other problems that people had and understand that I'm not the only one mm. who's having trouble finding a job. Um, and you know, occasionally uh, weighing in on my opinions, helping out other cheekies you know, because we're all there to help each other. Um, you know, with since I'm an American-born citizen, it definitely I think it helps some of the foreign-borns to understand um, what like the more intricate terms of phrases and how it's important to how important phrasing is, mm -hmm. and understanding that you know, sometimes the dictionary definition sometimes you know the words in the dictionary but we don't really use it and if yeah. you use it, it sounds weird. Yeah, and but, with, with opinions of over 40, 40, over forty different countries now. Um, I think think that really helps. So, so your the the group helped you in terms of being able to share, being able to learn, and feed. I'm always curious to ask too. Did you have any reservations about joining the association uh, before you joined, and if so, how were they alleviated after you joined? I mean, it was primary. My primary roadblock was the cost because I was a poor grad student. I didn't have. I was a little wary of throwing that kind of money, but it is an investment. You got to think about investing in yourself over the long. 
long term. So that was definitely something that I had to overcome. Another thing is that I'm a pretty introverted guy. I don't like talking to other people all that much, but it does, recognizing that's a weakness in myself, I saw CSA as an opportunity to work through that and overcome it in a very supportive environment. Well, thank you, Greg, and, and clearly it paid off. Uh, congratulations on your, your transition. And thanks for taking the time to share it with everyone, uh, despite being a pleasure. Appreciate it.